If the Messiah originally died on an upright stake, then where did the image of the cross originate from? Starts with a lifelong pagan, his name is Constantine. This is about Constantine's vision. So it starts out with Constantine being convinced that he needs more powerful aid than his military forces could give him. So he sought the help of God. But you read a little further down, he considered which God he could rely on for protection and help. Like I told you, he was a pagan. He didn't believe in Yahuwah. He believed in a multitude of mighty ones, a multitude of gods. Which would break what? The first commandment, you shall have no other Allahim before me, Yahuwah. Now look at this, when you are disobedient to Yahuwah's commandments, it's going to open you up for demonic deception. Look at this, so after he prayed, right, what does this say? A most extraordinary sign appeared to him from the heavens. Something so extraordinary, he swore by an oath that it was true. He said that about noon, when the day was already beginning to decline, he saw with his own eyes the sign of a cross of light in the heavens above the sun, and bearing the inscription, by this symbol, you will conquer. He was struck with amazement by the sight and his whole army witnessed the miracle. We can clearly tell this miracle was not from Yahuwah. The second commandment is to make no graven image of any likeness of anything that is in the heavens above or that is in the earth beneath. All right, so Yahuwah himself would not give anyone an image of a cross. And why would Yahuwah tell him by this symbol you will conquer? If we were told to be innocent as doves by Yahushua the Messiah himself, he said, I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. So he would not be telling us to go out and conquer by this symbol. Now it says he was struck with amazement by the sight and his whole army witnessed the miracle. Now look at this. This is after the vision he had. He said that he was unsure what this apparition could mean. But that while he continued to ponder, night suddenly came on. In his sleep, the Christ of God appeared to him with the same sign which he had seen in the heavens. And commanded him to make a likeness of that sign which he had seen in the heavens. And to use it as a safeguard in all engagements with the enemies. So do we seriously think that Yahuwah would appear to this man? And tell him to make a graven image. No, that would go against his very commandments himself. Who appeared to him was Hashatan, the deceiver. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. That's 2 Corinthians 11.14. You see, when we are disobedient, we open ourselves up to be deceived. Now look at this. He made the cross the standard. He called together the workers in gold and precious stones and sat in the midst of them and described to them the sign he had seen, telling them to represent it in gold and precious stones. Where do you think this stuff originated from? Now I'm going to show you how much deeper this deception goes. Constantine is known in history as Constantine the Great for his conversion to Christianity and his subsequent Christianization of the Roman Empire. You hear that? Christianization of the Roman Empire. This right here is called the Constantine Creed. And it actually shows you how the true followers of the Messiah of Yahushua HaMashiach were not Christians. As you can see at the top, Christianity as we know it today is a break off from Catholicism with a good deal of false and pagan teaching. Most of which was put in place through the mandate of Constantine. He formed this false half-truth religion. So it says, this is what Constantine would demand with the cooperation of the church with its bishops, elders, and teachers, all of which were appointed by him. And look what it says, in order to become what is called a Christian, that he must adhere to Constantine's creed from 325 CE. So originally to become a Christian, you had to say this oath or this creed right here. And I'm going to replace I with he because I'm not going to be taking this creed. But just listen to this. He renounced all customs, rites, legalisms, unleavened bread, sacrifices of lambs, of the Hebrews, and all other feasts of the Hebrews, sacrifices, prayers, aspirations, purifications, sanctifications, propositions, and fasts, and new moons, and Sabbaths. Absolutely everything Jewish, every law, rite, custom, is to be denied. 
So to become a Christian, you had to denounce the law of the Most High. You have to denounce the Sabbath, the new moon, all that stuff. And not only that, look what it says here in the creed. Furthermore, any follower of the Jewish Messiah, Yahusha HaMashiach, who wants to join this holy community was compelled to adopt a different set of rules and customs. Subsequently, special creeds were drafted to which the Christian would have to swear to. Look at that. The followers of the Jewish Messiah, Yahusha HaMashiach, were not Christians. And it gets even worse. Look at this. He accepts all customs, rites, legalisms, and feasts of the Romans. This is where you get the pagan holidays. Prayers, purifications with water. That's where you bring your baby to the church and they sprinkle it with some water. And look what it says also you have to accept. The new Sabbath. So dia, which means day of the sun. Sunday, which is the first day of the week. The actual biblical Sabbath is on the seventh day of the week, which on the Gregorian calendar would be Saturday. Look what it says. All new chants, observances, foods and drinks of the Romans, which would be what? Swine, pig, an animal that Yahuwah classified as unclean. The same one that Yahusha casted demons into. Look what it says here. Christians must not Judaize by resting on the Sabbath, but rather honoring the quote-unquote Lord's Day. You see that? They weren't even allowed to keep the Sabbath. The truth will set you free. We must come out of religion and have a true relationship with the Creator, Yahuwah, and not follow after the traditions of men. We must go back to being obedient to the Most High's commandments. This is the true set-apart way. You guys can go on my YouTube. I have a video on how to live set apart in Yahuwah. Don't forget to like, comment what you guys think about this video, and follow. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Shalom.